let's take a look back on Thursday night's action when it was Liverpool against Sheffield United at Anfield and there for SUTV was Carla Saba. Carl, two changes from Fulham. Nice for the Blades to get a goal at Anfield. What did you make of that performance? Yeah, Trustee McAtee came in. Um, really, really good shape I felt we had. You know, we went with a back five. Trusty playing on the left, left back. Um, did really well. Mo Salah was taken off. Um, but we, we started, you know, the atmosphere was, was crazy. It was really intense. We could have scored two in the first minute. First, first 30 seconds, a great flick from a long throw. And McAtee arrived in the box with his, with his right foot and unfortunately it just hit the keeper. But, you know, it, it was really good. The shape was there, the intensity was there. Um, and Liverpool really worked hard. You know, the, I think we probably took them, took them aback because I don't know what their fans were, were expecting, but we were really composed. When we actually had the ball, we did well and we had some good shapes. Briaton Diaz up top, it's just wonderful. He, he fought for everything, lost causes, he was making his own. He, he didn't let them settle, but you're playing against one of the best teams in Europe. And uh, unfortunately, we got past the first 15 minutes, which is a key, key mark and got the, everything sort of calmed down and then a really unfortunate goal went against us. And quite a few uh, substitutions throughout the game as well. Slamane and Brooks made an appearance. Yeah, the, the, it, it was unfortunate because I, I thought uh, Diaz was doing well, but the manager, he's been saying that he's having to manage the physical condition of the players. Um, so we saw some substitutions. Andre Brooks coming back in was, was great to see. Uh, Asula came on. The, the, you know, but what stood out for me was, was our blaster. You know, he, he played the full match. He was, he was causing them problems. They were trying to play into the gaps, but he was reading things. You know, he, he was playing one, one moment, he's playing on the left of, of the free, then he's in the centre of the free. And he was, his reading of the game was really good. Um, there were lots of positives. I thought Jaden Bogle again was great. He had a really good strike, you know, first time shot. Harmer, I hope his injury's not too bad because he, he came off not long after, after the goal. But, you know, that's, that's what, the, the, at the end of the end of the match, our fans gave our players a stand ovation. Their fans who stayed gave them great applause because they worked their socks off. You know the structure was there, the game plan was there, but the quality was there when they had the ball. Lots of positives to take. That's what we were expecting. If it was going to be a tough season, there's ways to lose. Unfortunately, we lost today, but full credit to the lads, the coaching staff, and the manager because. That was a really tough team match for one of the best teams in the, in the world in a packed stadium in this environment. So full credit to them uh, and I hope they can take this on now to the next game. And um, what was your highlight from the game? Uh, well, there were lots of standout bits. I thought we did well, but for me, it was hearing the Liverpool fans sing Robbo's name. You know, he, he made his his league debut at 16. He was their youngest ever player um, at one stage, and to hear hear them singing his name I thought it was wonderful. He, he played really well again. You know, captain again, and rightly so. But I, I, I know him. He'll be massively proud, and his family will, and rightly so, because to have your name sang at this theatre of, of football is just brilliant and well deserved so that was a lovely moment well Chris it was a disappointing defeat to Chelsea last time you faced them what did you take from that meeting yeah we we, we come off obviously the, uh, the the first win I think uh, at home to Brentford so it, it was obviously uh, quite an hectic period for myself and the coaching staff coming in at that period having the Liverpool game first game up and then and Brentford at home and then um, as what the Premier League is the the challenge of, of, of Chelsea away I thought we were okay first half I thought we put a good uh, account of ourselves um, we lost our shape a little bit second half and they punished us and uh, and, and ultimately you know, we didn't get the result that we, we, we were after but you know the you know I've got a lot of respect for um, for, for, for the manager and what he's done previously and, and, and um, yet again even though there'll be receiving criticism and the narrative will be pretty negative. You still look at him as a manager, what he's achieved and the players at his disposal. And, you know, it's going to be uh, um, um, an incredibly tough encounter for us, um, especially in the situation that we're in. What have you made of Chelsea's season since that game? 
Well, I think like everybody else, you know, we're all after that consistency level and putting runs together and, and you know, at times they've been scintillating, you know. I remember the Man City game. Um, I remember them playing, I think, away at, at Villa in the FA Cup where they would be three or four nil up at half time. And, you know, they had that ability um, to, to, to put you to bed pretty, pretty easy and pretty comfortably. But like everybody else, whatever level you're you're at, and, um, uh, and and looking at it from every 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 situation, they're all we're all looking for that consistency level, and um, and I should imagine the manager would be um, as frustrated as as, as as anyone that that they haven't found that that obviously would have pushed themselves forward in terms of performances that would have that have res resulted in in uh, in more points on the board. Two quite contrasting squads. Where will you be able to find your advantages against them? Quite contrasting squads. That's uh, <laughs> that's a statement. Um, yeah, quite different squads, uh, uh, of course. And, and you still look at the quality that they've got at the disposal and the young players that they've brought through right the way through as well on their journey over over the last sort of fifteen years. So, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't put. A, us in that in their bracket on a, on a, on a lot of things, but it's a game of football, and um, we've had some positive results against them previously. Um, fantastic uh, away performance when in our in our first season, uh, one of the first games against the big fo top four uh, at, at the time, and to get a result was was great for confidence uh, and, and morale. And towards the end of the season, we had a, a really positive result here. I think it was COVID season. Um, so, you know, thirty thousand, thirty odd thousand at Bramall Lane on on a on a Sunday afternoon. We keep telling you, if we if we turn up and we make it difficult, and we hope Chelsea have one of those inconsistent afternoons, uh, and we have a consistent afternoon, then then obviously the gap between um, uh, uh, both clubs, whatever it is on the pitch, you know, might might be a little bit smaller than than uh, than maybe it should be. Your squad looks quite different now to the last time you faced them. Ben Broughton Diaz, one of the additions, and when he has been on the pitch, he's performed very consistently in front of goal. How important will he be for the, the running in the end of the season? Yeah, he's massive. Listen, you, get, you only get a couple of opportunities in the transfer window. Our dealings were very minimal, and um, and, and one of those ones that we identified pretty early was 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 Ben coming into into the football club, and, and he made an. Uh, uh, an immediate impact. Unfortunately, picked up an injury that kept him out for a while. You know, and a, a, another one really. When you when you look back at it, it's the boy's attitude that he wants to carry on and wants to play, instead of maybe taking the sensible decision and and, and maybe resting up. But you know, he wants to show what he's about. And I, I think certainly when he has been on the pitch, he's he's done that. Whether it's assists, whether it's uh, goals, or just his general all-round performance. You know, our, our better performances. Have been with him in the side, and hopefully we can fit, keep him fit and healthy between now and the end of the season. And uh, he definitely makes us better. When you talk about attitude, young Oliar Blaster and his return, how impressed have you been by his performance? Yeah, we've kept track of him. We know we know in and around the, the football club that you know that, that we feel there's a player in there um, and want to develop and move forward, and and his career will go forward. Um, he had a fantastic loan. I thought it was great. Great decision uh, to send him out on loan, and the, the the fit at Port Vale at the time in League One with with him was great for both parties. And watched him numerous occasions, and watched him play for the international side, and you know was was we were really keen um, and excited to get working with him, and and uh, and knew that you know uh, when um, when we uh, curtailed his loan and brought him back. To Sheffield United for the football club that we that we had to bring him back to get him involved and he certainly got involved and he certainly proved that he's a, he's he's got um, a lot of qualities that uh, that hopefully can make him a top player. As a Sheffield United man yourself, how much does that excite you having young talent like Oli coming through, performing at a, a youth international stage, but also someone that you can help shape the career of? Well, very important for the football club that there's a pathway. You know, there's a lot of outstanding work that's, that has gone on. You know, historically here, I think we all we all recognise that, and we can name we can name a whole host of uh, uh, Sheffield United players that have gone on to to bigger and better things, um, and players that have played here as well in 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 that time as well. So, it's a good production line for us and a good pathway. Um, and for 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 me, yeah, great. We we enjoy working with young players. 
and it's there's going to be a healthy pathway going forward as well they're important financially we all understand that um that uh you know we we're, we're not in a situation just to just to go and 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 and, and outbid you know uh, uh, other other football clubs, so we have to we have to produce our own. We have to be smart in in, in recruitment as well. Um, and so, when the young boys come through, it's it's fabulous. But they have to be good enough. Um, you know, it's they're not just getting there on e, on on emotion or sympathy or or, or 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 anything like that. They have got to earn the right to get into that group. Then they earn the right to get onto the pitch. And certainly, Andre Brooks and Asula. And uh, and Oli Arblast are, are earning the right, and uh, will 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 help us going forward and be a major part of hopefully a bright future for us. You mentioned that future. How encouraging were the meetings that you had over the international break for giving you clarity about that future and bringing through developing talent and, and the future of the club? Yeah, of course. There was a lot of things that we talked and discussed. You know, while I was while I was out there, short, medium, and long term. Short, can we stay up? Have we got enough? What do we need to do? Um, which I still think that we, we have that opportunity to, to do that if we produce a consistent performances um, and medium to long term is what it, what it looks like medium to long term and um, you know very very encouraging there's a lot of good things happening at the football club the, the academy yet again as I keep saying keeps producing these young players um, I still think whatever division that we're in will be an attractive team to, to come and play for next year as I've always said, you know, playing in front of 33,000 at Bramall Lane every other week, uh, it's a it's a it's a big club. Um, we're going through a little bit of pain at the moment, but we'll come out the right way. Um, we've had great success over over the last eight or nine years, and and we're looking to replicate that. And um, I'd love to be part of that going forward. Speaking of Bramall Lane, last time you played at, at Bramall Lane, disappointing three all draw. How do you manage the highs? And the lows and the roller coaster of emotions that you get in a game like that. Yeah, well, through experience, really, you know. So uh, certainly, we had we had everything chucked at us um, there from a, you know, a, a quite a tight first half to to, uh, to get ourselves in front, getting pegged back, and then getting three going three one up, and then four one up. That as we thought it would be to to ultimately getting the result that we had. So yeah, it ended on a disappointing note, but I think there was a lot of positives that we can take from the game. The performance was really good, especially second half. And, you know, we're, we're up against the top side, you know, two weeks before they turned Tottenham over 3-0. And, you know, they're, they're, they're a really good side, a good top 10 side, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, we have, to, we have to look after that type of performance and produce that type of performance if we want to get anything out of the game um, on, on, on Sunday. But, yeah, you, you, you sort of get used to it. It doesn't make it any easier when you feel, you know, you should have had a win and you don't get that win. So that, that stings a little bit, but quickly into it. And obviously, you know, um, it's been a busy week um, leading up to the game on Sunday. When you talk about the, the positives, you'd said before that addressing the lack of home goals was a big target. Three goals against Fulham at home. Will it be a case of more of the same against Chelsea? Well, then, yeah, you, you pull the bed, you pull the quilt up to, to cover your face, and your feet are left dangling and getting cold, aren't you? So, uh, and then we then we concede goals as as the manner that we conceded. So, just trying to get that balance right. Really, we just needed to do something to keep in the game, which we did. You know, so I think one of the things that the Premier League does to you is that you know if if you if you're off it in, in any part, they'll they'll punish you. So if we go out too open to, to, to attack into front foot, we're just going to get picked off. If we're too defensive, we're just going to sit in and get and um, and, and, and get the result or, or, or get punished eventually. So, you know, we, we are a team that is going to have to defend. We are a team that possibly will, have, will give the ball up um, and Chelsea will have more possession than us. But, you know, if we can get the balance right, like we did against Fulham, um, Ultimately, it's 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 what you do in both boxes, and and, uh, and if you can score more goals than them, you have that opportunity of winning the three points. So that's what we'll we'll be looking to go for. You've spoken a lot about how much you want to give back to the fans and how much they can do to boost the team when it's a, a packed out Bramall Lane. How important would a, a complete performance be in, in giving back to them? Yeah, I mean, listen, there's been some really disappointing ones. Uh, post me, uh, pre me as well. So um, you know that's that's something that we have to we have to handle and we have to own and, and and accept that responsibility. But certainly, 
I've got to say for for how disappointing the season has turned out that the supporters generally on the whole have been fantastic uh, to to the team and um, you know regardless of f from towards me or whatever that when I've when I've watched them when when I wasn't the manager and and and, and you know they were at, at whatever time the kick off is they'll be 100% behind the team and they were on they were on Saturday against Fulham and we've got to give them something to shout about because certainly we haven't given them enough to shout about uh, previously but we've got some big games coming up before now and the end of the season the home games are going to be crucial there will, will be the place where hopefully we can pick up the majority of points that, that we're after and um, and if we can put a complete performance because we were, we were close uh, against Fulham to, 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 to really put in a complete performance in if we can get that complete performance then um, then hopefully we can you know, um, send them home happy and give them something to give them some smile about. Thank you. Well, that is all for this week's preview show. Don't forget, different kickoff time on Sunday for the visit of Chelsea, 5:30 p.m. down at Bramall Lane, and of course, Carla Saba and I will be there with the SUTV post-game show as well to break down all the events from our clash against Chelsea. But for now, it's goodbye.